For more on the, the markets, let's bring in uh, Jeremy Siegel, Professor Emeritus of Finance at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business. Time goes fast. You were just on, but you were not on. Uh, you were on before we had Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of last week. So all the things that happened, Jeremy, I would say you were probably nodding and saying, see, uh, Powell has done enough. Um, the market itself has tightened conditions to the point where no more Fed action is likely necessary. And that seemed to dawn on, on the bond market and even on the stock market. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Joe. And, and by the way, I think Jay Powell has to be on high alert because we did get some weak data uh, certainly on, on, on uh, the ISM jobless claims and certainly on Friday. L listen, <laughs> let's be frank. The Fed cannot screw up the way it did on inflation by waiting a year too late. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get a recession or anything like that, but he's got to be very alert to slow down. And if the data continues weak, he really does have to consider lowering rates next year, even though inflation is going to be sticky. And by the way, you know, for a long time, I, re I reject the, the narrative that the Fed had had. Oh, we can't be like the 1970s, the stop-go policy. We got to kill inflation. This is totally unlike the 1970s. In the 1970s, Arthur Burns and the Fed poured on money every single month of the year, 8 to 10%. In the first half of this year, we had a shrinkage of money that was the greatest in 80 years. And then it began recovering. I felt, felt better. The last two months, money has fallen again. Liquidity has fallen behind. Bank deposits have now fallen below the, the level that we had after the SVB crisis. Now, again, I'm just saying it's not the 1970s. And I just don't want him to delay the way he did on inflation, he's got to be flexible. I think that's what the market liked about, what, you know, his attitude in the Wednesday. He seemed more two-sided, but he really has to be truly two-sided because we do have two-sided risks right now. And the downside is, is looming much bigger than it certainly did uh, a week ago. So you weren't just kind of nodding a little last week. You were like... This is uh, all the things that you've been saying were coming home to roost in terms of whether the economy had already slowed down, whether the Fed should uh, take a light uh, touch. So, so in your view, we're still talking about uh, data dependency on another hike. That's yeah. you're still here. You, 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 that is not I, well, what I you think, think at all. should be done. You, yeah. And you think maybe the next move is, is a cut. I think the next move is a cut and it might come even sooner than we think, uh, uh, given the data. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not predicting a recession. We've got to look at that data, but it's begun to turn. We've got to be on alert. Uh, you know, some people are talking about we've had a half a percentage point rise in unemployment. Some people have said that has signaled many recessions in the future. I'm not there yet, but I just don't want a stubbornness on the part of the Fed the way they were on the, you know, the inflation side, on the downside. They have to be on the alert. And something else, this, you know, Joe, you let off at 6 a.m. because I was listening to you, you know, with the, the New York Times poll. Can you, can you imagine what it would be for the Democrats if there's a recession next year? I mean, as precarious as their situation is right now. I mean, wow. I mean, it, it would be disastrous. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and a lot of people are saying, oh, we're going to have a recession and that, like that. Not going to have a lot of consequences. It's going to have the worst political consequences that we've had for decades for the uh, the the power, uh, you know, the party in power. Or the incumbents. And so that mean, what does that mean? Tremendous political pressure on, on uh, by the Dems and Biden to say, hey, beat, got to look at this. Don't forget the Fed has a dual mandate. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, he has to look at that. Yeah, that, that I wonder that will play into a problem. And now, you know, the, the closer we get now, it's less than a year. So that that is going yeah. to be front front and center for for how the, the party that's in power decides to, to avoid uh, that slowdown. What about what was worrying people last week, Jeremy? And that is the 
uh, the supply. The supply is not going to go away even if the economy uh, it, it does slow. A and with $33 trillion to finance at these higher rates, that, so couldn't that cause, if people aren't going to buy, you know, I need to get paid to buy a 10-year. So yields can't come down that far for me to go t out 10 years. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, again, yield going down will help that uh, debt overhang. Um, yeah. And by the way, we, 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 you know, I mean, I think Ed Gardini mentioned, and something I've mentioned, we do have a, pr a really strong productivity recovery. And the promise of real growth being better in the next five or 10 years with AI and other factors mitigates some of the immediate debt problem. I don't think the, the, you know, the debt problem is going to be the big picture over the next 12 months. I'm going to I say it's going to be whether this slowdown accelerates and how fast the Fed will respond to it if, it, in fact, it does decelerate. All right, we're going to go, and we will, uh, good to have you on and update what you thought, I think it was just about a week ago when you were on, but that, uh, that's good. A lot has happened. Thanks, Jeremy.